Hi, my name is Liz Fitzgerald, and I'm co-founder and chief training officer at Assert Empowerment and Self-Defense. Today I'm here to talk to you about the adrenal dump and what your body will go through in a stressful or dangerous situation. We begin with, and I'm sure you've all heard of it, the fight and flight response. There are actually four responses that your body will choose from, fight, flight, freeze, and acquiesce. If you've ever seen a, a, a lizard as it's running down the sidewalk and being threatened either by your shoe or a bird, you'll notice that he'll go through all four responses in an effort to keep himself safe. The first thing he'll do is try and run, and he will run as fast as he possibly can to get out of the way. If that doesn't work, he'll freeze. Predators can only see in black and white, and they hunt by movement, so if he freezes, he is less likely to be spotted by whatever's hunting him. He will turn and fight if the freezing fails, and you'll see that the male lizard will, all of a sudden, his jowls will come out big and red, he'll puff up, and he'll become threatening, or as threatening as a little lizard can get. And then the final response would be acquiesce, which is if the predator has caught him anyway, he's likely to have been caught by the tail. Well, the lizard has this fantastic ability to release his tail and give it up so that he can run away and live to fight another day. So those are our four responses. However, our bodies are gonna go through a series of different physiological things that we generally don't experience on a day-to-day -day basis. We experience some of them when we are having an anxiety attack, but when we are in actual physical danger, we are likely to go through the majority of these. And they can be a very powerful tool or at the same time a very debilitating tool depending on what we choose and train to do with them. The first thing you might experience is auditory exclusion. That means that you can either suddenly be overwhelmed by noise and not be able to make out any one single thing or you might even go almost completely situationally deaf and not hear anything at all. Something else that you'll experience is a complete distortion of your perception of time. Time and space are going to be completely different in this experience. Your brain is going to shut down higher brain function and we're going to revert to our amygdala. Our amygdala is based basically on instinct. It has only four hardwired emotions, one of which is fear, and one of the things that automatically is experienced when that fear kicks in is a complete change of perception of time. It will either slow down to, to a crawl or it could speed up and seem like it's a blink of an eye. Uh, the other thing that you might experience is visual distortion, tunnel vision, depth perception changes. Even the most trained of officers and special ops teams so often have a hard time telling how far away they are from a subject when they are under the adrenal stress dump. This is actually a benefit in some cases. You just have to train in order to be able to use it to your, to your advantage. A big benefit is that your body will experience increased pain tolerance. I can tell you from personal experience that you could literally be stabbed and feel nothing for two to three hours after the event has passed and, and everything has sort of settled down. Once that adrenaline starts leaving your body, then you'll experience the pain. But during, you're less, far less likely to experience, to experience pain, whether it's from a hit or, or, on, or some sort of weapon attack. Something else that works to your benefit is a speed and strength increase. Your body automatically starts to flush the system, all the major muscle groups, with as much blood as it can feed and as much oxygen as it can get. This is precisely for your fight, flight, freeze, or acquiesce response. It prepares your body in order to be able to do whatever it needs to do. However, as a result of flushing all of your large muscle groups, with blood and oxygen, you will lose fine, fine motor skill capability. So using small, uh, say for example, a can of mace, uh, being able to finitely control your fingers and things of that nature will go right out the window unless you train properly to do so under adrenaline stress. Your heart rate and your blood flow, like I said, will increase as will your respiratory rate this, of course, is in order to get 
the blood to the appropriate muscle groups. You'll also experience muscle tension. Everything will be on guard. If you've ever seen a cat once it's startled, the first thing it does, it drops down and everything becomes kinesthetically engaged. All of a sudden, they can feel practically with their hair. If there's movement in the air, everything becomes engaged. We don't have as uh, fantastic a receptor as a cat might have, but our receptors work phenomenally well to deal with each other. We, your, your body will automatically prepare for any movement that it encounters. Something that you may not be aware of and may experience is either mono-emotion or emotional detachment. This can be experienced in a series of ways. Either you're, uh, you've, I'm sure you've heard the expression frozen in fear, aside from the four responses. Sometimes the fear can overwhelm you temporarily or over a long period of time and reduce your ability to, to do something. Um, you might experience feelings of sadness, grief, regret. Uh, on the, on the converse, you may be completely emotionally detached from the situation. You may have at some point experienced a moment in time where you felt that you were almost watching as if you were, uh, watching things happen to you as if it was a movie. That's emotional detachment and you should be prepared to experience that in that kind of a situation. You may also experience other involuntary responses in men, women, and children bowel and bladder release, dry mouth, men might experience involuntary erection. These are all things that can happen during and immediately after uh, a, an adrenaline stress dump. Once the event is over and the adrenaline starts to leave your body, you'll, you'll also experience some physiologic responses. You may suffer from nausea. You will have lactic acid build up in your muscles from all that blood and all that work that they've just been put under you'll experience soreness, increased sex drive in some cases, severe exhaustion, restless sleep, bad dreams. Exhaustion is a very, very big one. Exhaustion comes even during huge emotional outbreaks. You may have experienced a, a very stress, emotionally stressful situation and a day or two later found yourself inexplicably fatigued. That's a response to the adrenaline that courses through your body during the moment of stress. Additionally, between 24 to 48 hours after the initial event, you may experience a resurgence of the adrenaline dump, whether that means that you relive the entire incident and your body therefore responds accordingly, or your body just goes into a new adrenaline dump with no, uh, with no outside stimulus. In any case, the adrenaline dump is important to understand. This is what's going to dictate whether you're successful in fighting an attack or not. This is why we train under adrenaline stress and why it is important that the, your instructor know any previous victimization, any previous traumatic experience that you may have suffered in the past. Without that communication for your instructor, he may not be prepared for any body memories or any additional issues that may come up during a training session. I hope you found this helpful and we'll see you next time.